Picture this sunny day, clear skies, you're at a park, and suddenly there's a spinning funnel kicking up leaves. Tornado, someone yells. Except, nope, not even close. Dust devils are the atmosphere's optical illusion. They look like mini tornadoes, but they're born from completely opposite conditions. While real tornadoes need storms, dust devils are sunshine addicts. Here's the recipe. Baking hot ground heats up the air just above it. That air rises fast, a light breeze gives it a nudge, and boom, you've got rotation. The key difference? They're bottom-up phenomena. Real tornadoes form top-down from storm clouds. Dust devils are just heated air throwing a tantrum at ground level. Most are totally harmless, maybe 10 feet tall, lasting a few minutes, strong enough to scatter napkins at your picnic. But here's where it gets interesting. Some dust devils grow teeth. Arizona and Nevada have recorded dust devils reaching 300 feet wide, with winds hitting 60 mumpe apart. Strong enough to flip sheds, launch trampolines, and yes, occasionally injure people. But even the strongest dust devil is still playing in the minor leagues compared to what happens when actual storms get involved. Gus Nados, the storm's opening act. Now we're entering thunderstorm territory, but we're still not at real tornado status yet. Gustnados are basically the storm's temper tantrum. When a thunderstorm's cold air rushes outward and smashes into warm surface air, you get this chaotic boundary called a gust front. Along that front, little whirlwinds can pop off like firecrackers, spinning violently but only at ground level, never connecting to the clouds above. They're the atmospheric equivalent of that friend who shows up to the party, causes chaos for five minutes, then disappears. Brief, messy, and confusing. The damage, usually minor, knocked over fences, scattered debris, maybe some stripped shingles. But during massive derechos, those straight-line windstorms that barrel across states, you can get dozens of gust nados firing off in sequence. The 2012 derecho that raced from Iowa to Virginia spawned gusnado after gusnado, leaving people genuinely confused about whether they'd witnessed actual tornadoes. The scientific community actually debates whether to classify these as true tornadoes. They're rotating columns of air causing damage, but they lack that crucial cloud connection. Think of them as tornadoes' rebellious cousins who refuse to follow the rules. Water Spouts, Beauty and the Beast. Here's where things split into two completely different animals sharing the same name. Fair Weather. Water Spouts are the Instagram models of the vortex world. Gorgeous, delicate, spiraling down from fluffy clouds over calm tropical waters. These form through the same bottom-up process as dust devils, just over warm ocean instead of hot pavement. They're usually weak, short-lived, and mostly photogenic. Caribbean sailors see them regularly and just stare around them. No drama. But then there's the other kind. Tornadic water spouts are full-strength tornadoes that just happen to be over water. They're born from legit supercell thunderstorms with all the violent rotation you'd expect on land. And here's the nightmare scenario. When they come ashore, they don't weaken. They just become land tornadoes, instantly threatening everything in their path. Florida sees more water spouts than anywhere else on Earth, sometimes hundreds per year. The warm gulf waters and frequent afternoon thunderstorms create perfect conditions. But the Great Lakes get them too. Lake Michigan, despite being fresh water and up north, has produced some absolute monsters. The scariest part? If you're on a boat, there's nowhere to hide. No basement, no interior room, just you in open water watching a column of violence spinning toward you at 40 metal diameter. Land spouts, the stealth threat. Now we're finally in actual tornado territory, even though land spouts don't follow the usual playbook. Most people think tornado formation goes like this. Big rotating supercell. Mesocyclone forms, tornado drops. But land spouts skip that entire process. Instead, they start with weak rotation, 
already near the ground. Then a growing storm cloud stretches that rotation upward like pulling taffy. Suddenly, you've got a legit tornado, but it formed backwards. Visually, they're distinctive, thin, rope-like, often appearing under clouds that don't even look threatening. That's what makes them dangerous. You can be looking at partly sunny skies and suddenly there's a funnel on the ground with no warning. The Great Plains, especially eastern Colorado, are land spout central. The dry line, where gulf moisture slams into desert air, creates perfect conditions. Storm chasers have filmed days where five or six land spouts form within an hour, all under relatively innocent looking clouds. Most rate EF0 or EF1, annoying but survivable. However, some have reached EF2 strength with 130 Manaman Piach winds. That's enough to collapse roofs and flip vehicles. And because they form so quickly and don't show up well on radar, warning time is minimal. The takeaway, don't judge a tornado by its parent cloud. Sometimes the atmosphere sneaks one past you. Satellite tornadoes. The Pack Hunters. All right, buckle up. This is where tornado behavior goes from scary to psychological horror. Satellite tornadoes are exactly what they sound like. Smaller tornadoes orbiting a larger parent tornado, like moons around a planet. But smaller is relative. These satellites can still be violent EF2 or EF3 tornadoes in their own right, each carving independent damage paths. The danger is tactical. Everyone focuses on the main tornado. That's where warnings point, where sirens blare, where attention goes. But the satellites, they're hitting areas people thought were safe, coming from unexpected angles, creating devastation outside the predicted path. Hallam, Nebraska, 2004. A monster EF4 wedge tornado over a mile wide demolished the town. But it brought friends. Satellite tornadoes touched down around it, extending destruction far beyond the main track. Survivors reported feeling ambushed. They'd prepared for one threat and got hit by another from a different direction. The visual is genuinely terrifying. Storm chasers describe it as watching a giant predator surrounded by smaller hunters, all spinning in coordination. During major outbreaks in Oklahoma, chasers have filmed three or four satellites circling a main funnel, creating a kill zone that seems to attack from everywhere at once. This is the atmosphere playing 4D chess while you're trying to survive checkers. Multiple vortex tornadoes, the hidden blades. If satellites are attacking from outside, multiple vortex tornadoes are attacking from within. These are tornadoes containing smaller sub-vortices spinning inside the main funnel. Think of it as a tornado within a tornado. From a distance, you see one massive wedge, but inside, multiple violent cores are rotating around each other, each one producing extreme winds independently. This creates bizarre damage patterns. One house completely vaporized, foundation and all. The house next door, Minor roof damage. It looks random like the tornado was selective, but it's not randomness, it's geometry. Whether a subvortex passed directly over your location determined survival. The El Reno tornado, Oklahoma, 2013. The widest tornado ever recorded at 2.6 miles across. But what made it uniquely deadly were the subvortices, multiple violent cores whipping around inside with winds exceeding 295 Manamal Mirapiesh. The tornado suddenly changed direction, and even experienced storm researchers were caught off guard. Three veteran chasers lost their lives. Another example Zania, Ohio, 1974. A multiple vortex monster that created a damage path looking like several tornadoes hit simultaneously. Entire neighborhoods obliterated while adjacent streets stood relatively intact. Survivors struggled to understand why their block was destroyed, but their friend's block three streets over was spared. Multiple vortex tornadoes are nearly impossible to predict. Radar shows the overall circulation but detecting individual sub-vortices in real time. 
That's still beyond our capabilities. You're essentially facing multiple EF4 plus tornadoes packed into one funnel, each one carving its own micropath through the larger destruction. Supercell tornadoes, the final boss. Everything we've talked about leads here. The apex, the storm that makes meteorologists' blood run cold. Supercell tornadoes aren't just bigger or stronger. They're fundamentally different beasts. They're born from supercell thunderstorms, which have a mesocyclone, a rotating updraft that can extend 40,000 feet into the atmosphere. This rotation is the engine, and when it tightens and extends to the ground, you get tornadoes that can last for hours and travel for dozens of miles. These are the tornadoes that rate EF4 and EF5. We're not talking about damage anymore, we're talking about total annihilation, homes reduced to foundation slabs, asphalt ripped from highways, steel reinforced buildings twisted into abstract art, vehicles thrown half a mile. These tornadoes don't destroy structures, they erase them from existence. The Tri-State Tornado, 1925. It traveled two 19 miles across three states, killed six and nine five people, and remained on the ground for over three hours. Nearly a century later, it's still the deadliest and longest track tornado in recorded history, Joplin, Missouri, 2011. An EF5 that hit a major city directly. A hospital was destroyed while patients were inside. Homes, schools, businesses, entire neighborhoods turned to rubble. 161 lives lost. The damage looked like a war zone. Moore, Oklahoma has been hit by violent tornadoes multiple times, including an EF-5 in 1999 with the highest wind speeds ever recorded. 301 mem- Hell, that's faster than most race cars can travel. What makes supercell tornadoes uniquely terrifying is their intelligence. And yes, I'm anthropomorphizing, but survivors will tell you these storms feel calculated. They can spawn satellite tornadoes, develop multiple vortices, change direction without warning, and intensify in seconds. Even with modern radar, storm chasers, and warning systems, survival often comes down to having 10 minutes or less to seek shelter. Conclusion So here's the spectrum, from dust devils you can walk through, to gust nados that confuse even train spotters, to water spouts that can surprise boats and coastlines, to land spouts that appear under innocent skies, to satellite tornadoes that attack from multiple angles, to multiple vortex monsters hiding violence within violence, all the way up to supercell tornadoes that can level entire cities. The atmosphere doesn't just have one weapon, it has an entire arsenal. And the scariest part, we're still learning. Every major tornado outbreak teaches us something new, reveals some behavior we didn't predict, shows us we're not as prepared as we thought. The next time someone points at a dust devil and yells tornado, you'll know better. But you'll also know that when the real thing shows up, especially if it's born from a supercell, understanding the difference might just save your life. Stay safe out there.